Hi, and welcome to this first lecture. What is Arduino? Arduino is an open source electronic platform based on easy to use hardware and software. Over the years, Arduino has been the brain of thousands of projects, ranging from everyday objects to complex scientific instruments. A worldwide community of makers, such as students, hobbyists, artists, programmers, and professionals, has gathered around this open source platform and have contributed to an incredible amount of accessible knowledge that can be of great help to everybody that wants to master this powerful tool for everyday and professional projects. What can an Arduino do? An Arduino board is able to read inputs, such as the pressure of a button, the temperature of the environment, the amount of light in a room, and to use these informations to control a certain output or execute a specific action, such as turning on or off a light or an LED, activating a motor, reproducing a sound, or even sending a message on Twitter or an email via Internet. The type of inputs and outputs that can be used with Arduino is almost infinite, and the possibilities are growing day by day with the support of a huge community of developers all around the world. If you want to understand what these developers are doing and want to join this community, you first need to understand how to code an Arduino and to master the basic of programming and electronics. In order to tell your board what to do and how to read inputs and control outputs, you need to send a set of instructions to the microcontroller on the board. This collection of commands is what is known as program or Arduino sketch. To fulfill this task, you need to learn how to use the Arduino programming language and how to use the main Arduino programming environment, known as the Arduino IDE. In this course, we are going to learn all the basic knowledge needed to program an Arduino and how an Arduino code is working. Practicing these skills will let you understand how to write a code from scratch and how to build an infinite number of applications letting you transform your imagination into a real working project. Hi, and welcome to this second lesson. In this course, we will use the Arduino Uno board as our learning Arduino board. For this reason, in this lecture, I want to describe the anatomy of the hardware platform and describe each of the elements that are part of the board, detailing what is the meaning of each part and why it is used. So let's start. Arduino Uno is a microcontroller board based on the ATmega328P microcontroller. It has overall 20 inputs outputs pins six of which can be used as analog input to read value from real-life sensors, and 14 digital pins that can be used both as input or output. The other main components of the board are a 16 MHz crystal oscillator, a USB connection, a power jack, the power pins, some status LEDs and a reset button. Let's analyze these components in more detail. The microcontroller. The most important component of the board is the main microcontroller, the ATmega328P integrated circuit. This is the central brain of the board and it is where your code is stored and executed. Each Arduino model has its own version of microcontroller and most of the Arduino products are using chips from the Apple family. Remember, before creating your code, you are supposed to know which version of Arduino you are working with in order to select the right board in the Arduino programming environment. Analog inputs. The Arduino Uno board has six analog input pins, AO through A5. These pins can read the signal generated from analog sensors, like light sensor, temperature sensor, humidity sensor, 
and convert this physical value into a number that can be used by the microprocessor for different purposes. Arduino can accept analog signals that can assume any value in the range 0V to 5V and convert it into a number in the range 0 to 1023. Digital I.O. pins The board has 14 digital pins that can be configured to work as digital input or digital output. In this way, each pin can be used to read or write digital values. Digital signals can assume only two values, 0 or 1, that correspond to 0V and 5V. With these pins, it is possible to interact with a huge number of electronic components, like it is possible to read the state of a button and check if the button is pressed or released, turn on or off a LED, or drive a relay for controlling a motor. Digital pins that are labeled with the tilde symbol can also be used to generate a special kind of digital control known as PWM that can be used for many purposes such as fading the light intensity of an LED. Crystal Oscillator The 16 MHz crystal oscillator can be considered as the main heartbeat of the board. In fact, with its 16 millions of pulses per second, feed the processor and define the speed at which all the operations are executed. More or less, the microcontroller is able to execute a very basic instruction for each pulse, instruction like a simple addition or a simple subtraction. This means an average of 16 million of basic operations per second. The USB port. The USB cable is used to connect with your computer. Through the USB port, the Arduino can be powered and can receive the code that will be stored in the internal memory of the microcontroller and executed. This port can be used also during the execution of the program for exchanging information with your laptop using the Arduino serial monitor in order to check that your code is properly working. This checking operation is what is known as debug and it is frequently used to communicate with the Arduino and to check what is happening inside the microprocessor during your program execution. The power jack. Arduino boards can also be powered directly using a 9 volt power supply in order to have standalone applications without using the USB cable. Power pins. The power pins give stable supply voltages that can be used for your project. In fact, most of the components that are used with the Arduino work with 5V or 3.3V, and these pins can be used to give them power. Status LEDs On the board, there are four status LEDs that give specific information to the user. The power LED indicator should light up when you plug your Arduino into a power source to indicate that your board is powered correctly. If this light does not turn on, then there is something wrong with the power connection. The TX and RX LEDs blink each time a data is transmitted or received during a serial communication. For example, these two LEDs will blink during the download phase of your Arduino code and during the debug operations. Finally, the board has a general purpose green LED that can be used by your code. We will use this LED with one of our first coding exercise. Remember, this LED light is connected to the digital pin number 13 and we will easily let it blink with a bunch of simple instructions. Finally, the reset button. The board has a reset button that can be used to restart our program from the very beginning. Each time this button is pressed, the Arduino restarts your code from the first instruction. These are all the components of the Arduino Uno board. In the next lectures, we will discover how to use the Arduino programming language to use the Arduino pins and to write simple codes. Hi, and welcome to lecture number three. 
In order to build the project with Arduino, it is needed to connect electronic components together and to make some connection with Arduino board. To make this connection fast and easy, it is often used a breadboard with a bunch of wires. A breadboard is a rectangular plastic board with a bunch of tiny holes in it. These holes let you easily insert electronic components to prototype an electronic circuit, like this one with a battery, a switch, a resistor and an LED. The connections are not permanent, so it is easy to remove a component if you make a mistake or just start over and do a new project. These breadboards are called solderless breadboards because they do not require soldering to make connection between components. Electronic components can be soldered directly together, but more commonly they are soldered onto a printed circuit board. PCBs are what you will see if you take the cover off from many electronic devices, like a computer or a cell phone. This image shows the same circuit built in three different ways. On a solderless breadboard, with the component soldered directly together, and on a printed circuit board. Modern breadboards are made from plastic and come in all shapes, sizes and even different colors. The most common sizes are full size, half size and mini breadboards. Most breadboards also come with tabs and notches on the sides that allow you to snap multiple boards together. However, a single half-sized breadboard is sufficient for many beginner level projects. So, how do electronic components fit into a breadboard? Many components have long metal legs called leads. Breadboards are designed so you can push these leads into the holes. They will be held in place snugly enough that they will not fall out, but lightly enough that you can easily pull on them to remove them. These leads can fit into the breadboard because the inside of a breadboard is made up of rows of tiny metal clips. This is what a clip looks like when it is removed from a breadboard. When you press a component's lead into a breadboard hole, one of these clips grabs onto it. Each of these clips makes a unique electrical connection since it is a single piece of conductive material. So, if you want to make an electrical connection between two components, you can just use two holes in the same row of, of a breadboard. Here, we have a breadboard where the adhesive backing has been removed. You can see how each horizontal row is made of these metal clips. You will also notice that there is a gap in the middle of the breadboard. This gap half a single row into two isolated sections, each with five holes. So, for each side of the same row, you can connect a maximum of five components leads. Aside from horizontal rows, breadboards usually have what are called power rails that run vertically along the sides. These special rails are used to distribute the power supply voltages of the circuit along the entire breadboard. These power rails are metal strips that are identical to the ones that run horizontally, except that they are typically all connected. In fact, when building a circuit, you tend to need power in a lot of different places. These power rails give you a lot of easy access to the power wherever you need in your circuit. Many breadboards have numbers and letters to mark rows and columns. These annotations help the user at giving to each hole a unique identifier. As an example, the hole situated in column A, at the first row, will be indicated as A1, and the hole situated in column J, at row 30, will be indicated as J30. Remember, each set of five holes forming a half row is electrically connected. For example, the hole A1 is electrically connected to holes B1, C1, D1 and E1. The same hole is not connected to hole A2, because that hole is in a different row, with a separate metal clip. The same hole is also not connected to holes F1, G1, H1, I1 or J1, because they are on the other half of the same row. This image summarizes how the holes are connected in a typical breadboard. Each yellow line represents a single metal clip. So, all the holes laying on the same line are electrically connected with a single metal strip. In order to make connection between the electronic components and the Arduino board, we need to use special prototyping wires called jumper wires. Jumper wires, in fact, have steep ends that are easy to push into the breadboard holes. 
there are two main different options available when purchasing jumper wires. Flexible jumper wires are made of a flexible wire with a rigid pin attached to both ends. These wires are easy to use for beginner circuits, but they can get very messy when the circuit becomes more complex. Another option are rigid jumper wires that have both their hands bent down 90 degrees, so they are ready to put into a breadboard. These kits are very convenient because they come with wires of many different pre-cut lengths. Finally, you can also buy spools of wire and a pair of wire strippers and cut your own jumper wires. This is the best long-term option if you plan on doing a lot of electronic projects, because you can cut wires to the exact length you need and pick which colors you want. With this introduction to breadboard and its usage, you now know everything you need to build several Arduino projects using the most common tool for prototyping an electronic circuit on a breadboard. Hi, welcome to lecture number 4. In this lecture we are going to see how to install the Arduino IDE software and what are the, all the most important features to use it in a proficient way. Installing Arduino is really easy. First, we need to download the Arduino installer from the Arduino website. The easiest way to find it is just searching on Google Arduino IDE Download. Clicking on the first result of our search we are redirected to the Arduino's website. Here, on the right side of the page, are listed all the installer packages for the most important operating systems, like Windows, Linux or Mac OS. Just click on the right operating system for you, in my case I will choose Mac OS, and then you will be asked to make a free donation. Here, you choose to donate if you want, or you can directly download the installer for free. After downloading, click on the installer package and follow the instructions that will be prompted during the software installation. This step is really easy because the Arduino IDE comes as a single all-included package, so you don't need to install external software to let it work. Accept the free license agreement and leave all the installer options to the, its default values. With a couple of clicks, your Arduino software is correctly installed and ready to be used. Now. Open the Arduino IDE. The software interface is very user-friendly. In fact, it has a main editor section where you will write your code, an output console where are showed some informations, and a few press buttons. In the code editor section, you can open and modify an Arduino sketch or create a new one from scratch. The editor recognizes the Arduino programming language keywords and highlights them with special colors such as blue yellow or orange. On the top side of this editor section are present five press buttons. The verify button is used to compile and verify your code. Compilation is the process of converting the Arduino code into a binary file that can be executed by the microprocessor on the board. The verification process just checks if your Arduino sketch is written correctly following all the coding rules of the Arduino language. If your code is written correctly, at the end of this operation the console will show the size of your code expressed in number of bytes and percentage of use of the entire Arduino program storage space. The upload button is used to download your code into Arduino board. Just by clicking this button you will flash your binary file into the microcontroller internal memory. Remember to plug the Arduino board to a USB port of your computer before the upload operation otherwise it will give you an error. The other three buttons are used to create a new sketch, open an existing one and save the current one. At the top side of the program you can find different menus. Under the file menu you can find all the basic operations related to file editing like creating a new file, open an existing one and so on. The most important option here is the examples submenu where you will find tons of example sketch to learn the Arduino programming language. This option is really useful because you can find reference code for many popular usage of the Arduino, like analog and digital control, sensors, communication, servo motor, and so on. Under the tools menu, you can find a list of some software instruments to be used with your Arduino, like the Arduino serial monitor, used to communicate with the board via the USB port, and the Arduino serial plotter, used to plot and visualize data transmitted by your Arduino. 
The most important options of this submenu are the board selection, where you select the kind of board you are working with, and the port selection menu, where you specify the COM port to which your Arduino board is connected. If you plug Arduino to a USB port, it should be automatically recognized. Remember, it is very important to define these two options before making any operation with the Arduino IDE. So each time you open a project, remember to select the correct board and the port in the tool submenu before making any operation. In the top right corner of the program interface, you can find a small icon that lets you open the serial monitor. This monitor is used to communicate with your Arduino during runtime operation of your code and to easily debug your project. Finally, the output monitor will show you some information each time you compile and upload your code. If any error occurs during the verification process of your code, the error will be plotted here and the corresponding wrong part of your code will be highlighted in the code editor section. In this way, you can make the correction. These are all the fundamentals of the Arduino IDE. Now, in the next lecture, we are ready to make our first Arduino project. In this first exercise, we are going to code Arduino with one of the most popular and basic projects, the Hello World program. This program lets the Arduino display the Hello World message in the serial monitor and is a good example to illustrate the basic syntax of the Arduino programming language and the usage of the Arduino serial monitor. First, let's create a new file from scratch and save it as Hello World in a directory where we will store all of our sketches of this course. Before starting with coding, remember to plug your Arduino into a USB port and to select the Arduino from the board submenu and to choose the right COM port from the listed menu. You should see that the Arduino is automatically recognized and listed here. All new sketches start with the same template. Here you can see that there are two main code blocks, the setup and the loop code. Both blocks enclose in curly braces. These two sections are mandatory in each Arduino sketch and will be filled with instructions. The setup function is the preparation code section of our program and is the first to be executed when we power on the Arduino or restart it through the reset button. This function is executed only once after the program starts and here we will write instructions that need to be executed only at the starting phase of our program like instructions for configuring pin mode and initializing the serial communication. The loop function is the main execution section and all the instructions written here will be executed continuously during the program execution. This code block is executed after the setup phase and the program will stay here forever, repeating all the instructions from top to bottom in an infinite loop. To make this project done, we need to initialize the serial communication on the USB port and send out the hello world message. That's it. Doing these two operations is really easy with the Arduino language, so let's start. The initialization of the serial port is done in the setup block. To make this initialization we use the serial begin function. But what is a function? A function is just an instruction that fulfill a specific task, like in this case the serial begin function starts the serial communication and configures the speed at which the transmission of data happens. This speed must be given as an input parameter to the function, so we will write this number between the round brackets of the function. This speed is generally referred to as baud rate and is expressed in bit per second or BPS and generally use standard values. The default baud rate of Arduino is 9600 BPS and we will later set the same speed in our Arduino serial monitor in order to synchronize the communication between the Arduino board and our computer. So we write our speed value between brackets and we put a semicolon to indicate the end of this first statement. Remember, this is a very fundamental rule in the Arduino language. In fact, each instruction must be always ended with a semicolon Breaking this fundamental rule will always generate an error during the compilation process. After initializing the serial communication, we need to send out our message. This can be easily done with a single instruction in the loop section. We will use the serial print ln function. This function is used to print data on the serial monitor, like number or character, and start a new line. To make use of this function, we'll need to write the data that we want to plot between the brackets. 
So, if we want to transmit the phrase Hello world, my name is Arduino, we just need to write this phrase inside the brackets written between quotes. These quotes are used to specify that this phrase is just a collection of characters and not an Arduino instruction. So, also in this case, to end this second instruction we put a semicolon. The program is done. We can now compile our code and check if everything is ok. As you can see, no errors are plotted on the output console, so we can proceed with uploading the sketch inside the Arduino and get it executed. To see if the program is working, we now open the serial monitor. In the left bottom corner of this window, we select our transmission speed. Here, we will choose the same value specified in the serial begin function. As you can see, the monitor is completely filled with our hello world phrase. But what's happening here? Since the print function is called inside the Arduino loop section, this instruction is executed continuously without any delay between each print. The Arduino needs a really short time to execute this instruction in the order of 1 millisecond, so it is sending our phrase a thousand of time per second, filling the serial monitor window. To avoid this unwanted behavior, we need to insert a delay between each plot. So we will modify our code adding a new instruction called delay and specifying the amount of delay that we want to insert expressed in milliseconds. So if we want one second delay between each plot, here we will write delay 1000. We now proceed again to the compilation and upload the sketch to see what is changed. Opening the serial monitor, we now see that our hello world message is plotted each second. So now we can better understand what happens when the Arduino executes the loop section of our code. It first prints our message and then waits one second without doing anything. After the delay function is executed, it then restarts from the beginning of the loop section doing this repetition forever. But what if we want to plot our hello world message just once? Easy, we can just move the serial print function inside the setup and get it executed only once each time we restart our program. Let's upload this new code and check how the code program has changed. As you can see now, Arduino executes this direction during the setup and then enter the loop section of the code doing anything. Each time we restart our program by pressing the reset button, the message is plotted again, since the program is restarted from the very beginning, executing the setup block first and then entering in the loop section. We have now finished our first functional program. In this first exercise, we have seen what is the basic structure of an Arduino program, what are the meaning of setup and loop section, how the code is executed, and how to use the serial communication to send a message to the computer. In the next lectures, we will dive more deeply into the Arduino programming language, making many other examples. Hi, and welcome to lecture number 6. In this lecture, I will introduce you to all the basics regarding digital pins and how to use it. Arduino uses these pins to interact with the world and other electronic components. In fact, these are called General Purpose Input-Output Pins, or GPIO, because they can serve many functions in electronic and can be configured to work both as input or output. With these pins, you can make two fundamental sections, like read a digital value or write a digital value. But what is a digital value? Digital values are electric signals that can assume only two states, 5 volt and 0 volt, often referred to as high or low state, or true and false, or more commonly as binary values 1 and 0. These naming conventions are equivalent and describe the same two states. All of the 14 digital pins of the Arduino can be used to both read and write operations, depending on how they are configured to work. When a digital pin is configured as input, we can read the state of a pin, high or low, and use this value inside our code. As an example, this means that if we apply a 5V signal to a digital pin and make a read operation, we will have an high state, or 1, as a result. On the contrary, a 0V will give low state as result. 
Probably the most common use of a digital read operation is to read the state of a press button. In fact, a button presents only two states, pressed or released, and can be easily interfaced with Arduino to make a specific task each time the button is pressed. When a digital pin is configured as an output, we can use it to generate a high or low state, so 5 volt or 0 volt respectively, to interact with other electronic components. This means that if we write an high state to a pin, it will generate a 5 volt, and if we write a low state, it will generate a 0 volt. A very common task is to drive an LED. In fact, an LED is an electronic component that will emit light each time a current flows through it. So, if we connect it to a digital pin and write a nice state, the 5 volt will turn on the LED since it will make a current pass through it. On the contrary, writing a low state will turn off the LED. Remember from our previous lesson that the Arduino board already has an onboard green LED electrically connected to digital pin number 13. We will make use of it on our next exercise. Another common usage of digital writing is to drive a relay for just turning on or off a load, like a light bulb or a motor. A relay, in fact, is just a simple switch controlled with an electric signal, so we can easily interface it with an Arduino GPIO and make a write to a high or low state to open or close its electrical contact. So, to make use of a digital pin we need to fulfill two steps. First, configure it as an input or output, and second, make use of the read and write operations to interact with other components. The corresponding functions in the Arduino language are the following. Pin mode to configure a digital pin. This function must be called for each of the digital pin used on the sketch. And digital read to read the state of a pin. Digital write to write the state of a pin. These are all the fundamentals needed to understand what a digital pin is and how to use it. We can now proceed with some practical exercise. Hi, and welcome to this second exercise. In this exercise, we are going to make use of a digital pin to blink a simple LED light and dive more deeply on what we have seen in the previous lesson. We will first use the LED embedded on the Arduino board, and then we will drive an external LED. So let's start. First, let's create a new sketch and save it as Blinky. Before starting with coding, remember to plug your Arduino into USB port and then select the Arduino Uno from the board submenu and to choose the right COM port. To blink an LED, we need to turn it on and off continuously, with some amount of delay between these two phases. To accomplish this task, we will use a digital pin in output mode and we will write high and low value to that pin in order to generate the voltage that will drive the LED. For this purpose, we could use any of the 14 digital pins on the board, since they are all equivalent, but in this case we will use pin number 13. In fact, this pin is already connected to the onboard LED. In this way, we don't need to make any connection with external components. We first start by configuring this pin as an output, using the pin mode function. This configuration must be executed only once, this means that we can write this operation in the setup section. To use the pin mode function, we must specify which pin we are configuring and which mode we want to use. These two pieces of information must be written inside the round bracket respecting a precise order. First, we write the number of the digital pin that we want to use, so in our case, this pin is number 13, and then we write the mode, so in this case, we will write output. Remember to separate these two values with a comma. Pin mode will accept only two possible mode configurations, input or output, otherwise it will give an error during the compilation of the code. 
You can also notice that this special keyword is recognized by the Arduino IDE and highlighted with a blue color. After configuring the pin, we can now proceed with turning on or off the LED. To make this, we will first write the high state on the pin number 13 and then write the low state to the same pin. This can be easily done using the digital write function. Since these two operations must be executed continuously, we will write our code inside the loop section. To write an high state, we first specify the pin number 13 as the first parameter of the function and then the high state as the second parameter. Also in this case, these two values are separated by a comma. To write a low state, we will make use of the same function but replacing the high state with a low. Also in this case, you can notice that high and low are recognized as special keywords and highlighted in blue color. These two instructions will turn on and off the LED, but if we want to see the LED blinking, we will need to insert a small amount of delay between the two write operations in order to control the blinking speed. So, we will insert a delay after the first write instruction and after the second instruction. In this way, our code we will first turn on the LED. Then, it will wait one second without doing anything. Then, turn off the LED and again wait one second without doing anything. Finally, it will restart from the beginning of the loop, repeating these actions forever. So, our code is completed. We now proceed with uploading our code to the Arduino board and check if everything is working. You should see that the green LED on the board is blinking slowly, exactly as we have specified on our code. As you can see, it was really easy to make this exercise and required just a bunch of very simple instructions. But, how can we control the blinking speed? Easy! If we want to increase the blinking speed, we can insert a smaller delay between the two instructions. As an example, we can wait half second and change the value in the delay function accordingly to 500 milliseconds. Proceed now with uploading this new code and check what has changed. As you can see now, the LED is blinking faster. Let's proceed now with the second part of this exercise and let's try an external LED. To make this done, we need just a few components. An LED light, a 220 ohm resistor used to limit the current that pass through the LED, and a couple of jumper wires. To build up the circuit, you can follow this simple schematic. But before you make the connection, remember, you must always unplug the Arduino from your computer before making the wiring. In this way, you will not power the circuit and avoid possible damage due to wrong connection. It is also important to spend some attention on how you connect the LED to the breadboard. In fact, an LED is a component with a polarity. This means that the current will flow only in one direction, from the positive pole to the negative one, with the positive pole corresponding to the longer leg of the LED and the negative one to the smaller one. In this diagram, the positive pole is connected to the resistor. Pay attention to this important detail, otherwise this simple circuit will not work. The shorter leg of the LED is connected to the ground pin of the Arduino through a black jumper wire. Finally, the digital pin 13 is connected directly to the resistor using another jumper wire. After completing the wiring, you can plug the Arduino to your computer and check if everything is working. You should see the external LED blinking. As you can see, we have reused the same code, since the external LED is connected to the same digital pin. If your circuit is not working, triple check your connection and make sure that you have connected the LED in the right way. Before completing this exercise, we can slightly modify our code to make use of a different digital pin. For example, we can use the pin number 5. To make this modification, we just need to put 5 instead of 13 inside pin mode and digital write functions, and to move the jumper wire from pin 13 to pin 5. Upload your code and you will see the same result as before. That's all. So, in this exercise, we have seen 
how to configure a digital pin using the pin mode function, how to use a digital write to blink an LED, and how to connect an LED to the Arduino using a breadboard, a resistor, and a couple of jumper wires. That's all for this exercise. See you in the next lecture. Hi, and welcome to this new exercise. In this exercise, we are going to use a digital pin to connect a press button to the Arduino and check if it is pressed or released. So let's start. First, start by creating a new file and saving it as read button. Before starting with coding, as always, remember to plug your Arduino into USB port and to select the Arduino Uno from the board submenu and to choose the right COM port. From now on, I will assume that you have already done this step before starting a new exercise. To use a button with the Arduino, we need to connect it to a digital pin that has been configured as input and read its state using the digital read function. We can use any digital pin from 0 to 13, since they are all equivalent, and in this exercise we will use the pin number 8. For this little project we need just a few components, a press button, a 220 ohm resistor, and some jumper wires. Follow this simple diagram to make this connection. To understand this simple circuit, we must first understand how this press button works. In fact, this button presents four pins, used in pairs. To understand the working principle, we will focus only on two pins, since the same principle will be valid for the other couple of pins. When the button is not pressed, the button works as an open switch. This means that the current cannot flow between these two terminals. Vice versa, when the button is pressed, the switch will be closed, letting the current pass between these two pins. This is what this circuit is implementing. One pin is connected directly to the 5V pin of the Arduino using a red jumper wire. The other is connected to one lead of the resistor. Finally, a black wire connects the other lead of the resistor to the ground pin of Arduino, that corresponds to 0V. If we want to read the state of this button, we must connect a wire from the digital pin number 8 to the resistor. So, follow this simple wiring and let's proceed with coding. We first start by configuring pin number 8 as an input, using the pin mode function. As we have seen in the previous exercise, this configuration must be executed in the setup section. Usage of pin mode function is exactly the same that we have seen before, but in this case we will use the input mode instead. So, we declare pin number 8 as an input pin. After pin configuration, we can proceed with reading the state of that pin using the digital read function. To make use of this function, we must specify the digital pin that we want to read. So, in our case, this is pin number 8. This operation will give as a result the value that represents the state of that pin, so high or low, numerically expressed as 1 or 0. If we want to use this value inside our code, we must store it somewhere in order to recall its value each time we need it. This is easily done by making use of a variable one fundamental concept of all programming languages. We will focus on this concept more in detail later in this course, but at this moment just think of a variable like a box to which you give a name and where you put an information that you can take back each time you need it. So, in this case, we will define a variable of type integer, declared as int, with a name that we can choose arbitrarily. Since we will use it to store the state of a button, we can simply call it button. After declaring this variable, we can now use it to store the result of the digital read function. This is done by using the equal symbol. This short line of code is executing two different actions. It first calls the digital read on pin number 8, and then stores the result of this operation inside a variable called button. That's all it's needed to read the state of a button. But how do we visualize the result of this operation? we can make use of the serial communication as we have seen on our first exercise. To make this done, 
just remember the two steps needed to use the serial function. First, we start the serial communication setting the speed using the standard baud rate of Arduino. Then, we call the serial print function to plot information on the serial monitor. So, in our case, if we want to visualize a message like button state is equal to a certain value, we can just call the serial print function many times in order to compose our message. We first plot the text of the message writing this text between quotes. Then we plot the button state by passing the button variable as argument of the serial print function. In this way, we are taking back the information that we have stored inside the button variable and we are using it inside our message. At the end of this code, we put some delay in order to take some time between each new plot. The code is done. We can proceed now with uploading this to the Arduino board. Let's see how it works. After uploading, remember to open the serial monitor and to choose the same speed value you have specified in the serial begin function. As you can see, the button state is continuously plotted in the serial monitor, and each time you press or release the button, the corresponding value changes in real time. If the value you are seeing on your screen is not changing, triple check your wiring and make sure to follow the exact coding of this lecture. We can now summarize and understand what the overall code is doing. In the setup section, we are initializing the digital pin number 8 as an input and the serial communication. Then, in the loop section, we first declare a variable and then we use it to store the result of the digital read operation. Finally, we plot a message to the serial monitor to visualize the value of the button and insert some delay to set how fast we want to plot the message on the screen. In this exercise, we have learned how to make a digital read using the digital read function. We have briefly introduced what a variable is and how to use it. And finally, our press button works and how to connect it to the Arduino.